triathletes, we've got a problem. The roadies are laughing at us, and it's not because of what you think. It's not because of the riding without socks, although that does look a bit ridiculous. It's not because of the helmets, which also look ridiculous, but they're fast, so it's okay. And it's not because of the one-piece suits, although they're pretty comfortable. Unfortunately, it's because some pretty ugly bikes have made their way into the sport. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I was listening to a cycling podcast the other day, and they were talking about all these helmets and the changes to the helmet rules and the new helmets and how, how crazy they looked. And the cyclist on the podcast said, at least we don't look like triathletes. <laughs> And those helmets look pretty ridiculous. It's triggered a little bit, but then when you look at these bikes, I think you can understand why you said that. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that road cycling is immune to being hit with the ugly stick. We've seen the Balaclava helmet. Um, we've recently seen the Visma Lisa bike rice cooker. However, it looks though, like the UCI are working to get rid of those. So so that we won't see them again. But triathlon doesn't have the same bike rules that road racing have. And all the bikes used in time trials in the Pro Peloton are pretty good looking bikes and pretty fast looking bikes. But some of the bikes recently that have made their way into Ironman and onto some triathlon race courses look pretty awful. And even the roadies are laughing at them. Now this is not an exhaustive list, but I've picked out a few of my, they're not favorites, the opposite of a favorite. Exhibit A, the KDX Tri. Now this actually looks like these little bikes that you can hire in the city and ride around. Obviously they don't have aero bars, but this, this just looks like they started making a bike and then ran out of bits, but, but just released it anyway. A top tube would be great. Now the next two offenders, Exhibit B and Exhibit C, they got the top tube, but they forgot the down tube. We're talking about the Tri-Rig Omni and the Ventum 1. Both have a top tube, which is great, but they're missing a down tube. Again, maybe if these guys and KDX got together, they could put together a complete bike. Then we've got this thing from, I don't know if it's KU or Coup, however you pronounce it. But it, it's a normal bike, but it's just squished. Um, it even just looks uncomfortable and short. Um, I don't know what to say about it, but it just looks weird. Then the diamond. And this, this has been around a while. This, this sort of, I think it's called the beam frame with no seat tube. But again, we've got three different bikes, each missing one of the key tubes. I can, looking at this, I can see how it might be possibly comfortable by removing the seat tube. Maybe it lets the seat flex a bit more. I don't know, I've never tried it. But again, taking away those UCI rules about a bike having a triangle construction, look what we've ended up with. So what do you think? Sure, the comment section is going to light up. Should we have to have traditional frames? Should we have all these alternative looking frames with, with different tubes missing? What do you reckon? I love the look of the bike that sticks to the pretty traditional form factor. It just looks nice. It looks fast. Maybe these are more comfortable. Maybe they're more practical. Maybe they're easier to travel with because there's less bits. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. If I've missed any bikes out, let me know as well. I'm keen to see what else is hiding out there that hopefully does stay hiding. But um, yeah, this is an interesting one. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.